Hey friends, Noah from Corporate Streams. Today we're gonna to be looking at the newly announced PTZ camera from Canon, the CR-N500. Be seen, heard, and better understood through virtual gatherings. Elevate your message with Corporate Streams. So this video is an announcement video. We're gonna go through all the new specs and talk about this camera at length. I do wanna note that I have a separate comparison video between the CRN500 and its little brother, the CRN300. So if you wanna see that, check that out as well. All right, so the CRN500 is a professional 4K NDI PTZ camera. It comes in two colors, either satin black or titanium white. There are three models in this lineup, the CRN300, 500, and X500. We'll also be doing a separate announcement for the X500, so do that YouTube thing if you're interested in checking that one out as well. This camera features a one inch CMOS sensor with dual pixel autofocus. It has HDMI, 3G SDI and IP video outputs. It has a built-in ND filter with a quarter, 16th, and 64. It has a Canon Digix DV6 processor with a minimum of 1.5 lux of light. It works with the Canon control software. It can capture up to Ultra HD 4K at 30 frames a second or 1080p at 60 frames a second. It has built-in NDI and HX support, 15 times optical zoom, and power over Ethernet Plus. It has Genlock, dual XLRs, and a 3.5 audio input. It can be controlled over IP, RS-22, IR, or Wi-Fi control. And it's also compatible with the Canon PTC controller. So this product does have a whopping one inch sensor, which is large for a PTZ camera. Now we did note in the N300 that that had a one and two thirds inch sensor, which is about a quarter of the size of this one inch sensor. And this one inch sensor is about a quarter of the size of an APS-C sensor. So that kind of gives you a little bit of scope. Traditional broadcasters and videographers will note that smaller sensors were definitely more common up until a few years ago. Now full frame and APS sensors have started to dominate the market. It. And so these cameras are starting to size up or use larger sensors to try to compete with that shallow depth of field and that cinematic look that we've all become accustomed to. So having that one inch sensor is a huge difference, at least to me, between these two cameras. The sensor resolution has two different listings here. There's an actual megapixel versus the effective megapixel. The actual is 13.4, while the effective is 8.29 megapixels, which is the same resolution as 4K. The gain is listed between six decibels and 33 decibels, which is interesting because there's not zero dB gain. And even though gain and ISO are technically slightly different, let's go ahead and look at this chart and we'll see as we go up in decibels, it adds gain. So that will give you a little bit of a ballpark of what these numbers are to their ISO counterparts. There's a minimum illumination of 1.5 lux. There needs to be at least some light produced so that this camera can pick that up. So hopefully you're not shooting in the dark. And its white balance range is between 2,000 and 15,000. Kelvin. Most of us will shoot at between 3200 and 5600 Kelvin. The shutter speed can go down to one third of a second or as fast as one two thousandth of a second and it has a max digital zoom of 20 times. It does have a built-in ND filter which is another perk of this particular device and the ND filter is used with a mechanical filter wheel with a clear two stop four stop and six stops of ND filters. The lens is a 15 times optical zoom with a focal length of 8.3 to 124 millimeter. On a 35 millimeter equivalent sensor, this would be equal to a 25.5 to 382.5 millimeters. The field of view is represented in degrees, which is another way of looking at how wide or tight you can get and the horizontal range is between 5.7 to 73 degrees, and the vertical range is between 3.2 to 45.2 degrees. The N500 has a maximum aperture of 2.8 to 4.5, and just like its little brother, when there's a range that's listed on the widest end of the zoom, you'll have the full range, or 2.8, and then as you zoom in, the range will fall off because it's harder for a lens to produce light when you're zooming in like that. So the maximum aperture when fully zoomed in will be a 4.5. To be honest, this is a little bit disappointing in my opinion. Having a through f-stop where it's consistent throughout the zoom is super helpful, and especially at a price point of over $5,000, I expected that to be a through stop when it's not. The minimum focal distance is 0.4 inches or one centimeter, which is super close. When you're zoomed in all the way in the telephoto lens, it's 23.6 or 60 centimeters. There is optical image stabilization, autofocus, and the ability to control the focus manually through the software. The N500 can output to NTSC and PAL and has a range of formats. 
So instead of reading all these resolutions to you, I'm just gonna let you look at these and see if any of these float your boat. It is kind of funny that there are resolutions as low as standard def. So if you're still doing standard definition, uh, it's probably time to upgrade your system. Now streaming is a little bit of an exception there because for business streaming and limited ICT support, it's not about the highest resolution, it's about getting the message across. And so sometimes on corporate networks, you have to reduce the resolution and the bandwidth to make that work. So just keep that in mind. Even though I am poking fun of it, I understand why that's the case. You can do embedded audio over HDMI or SDI, and this supports IP streaming on RTMP, RTP, and RTSP at 1080p, 720p, and 360p at frame rates of 2997, 5994, and 60p. This camera can also do multi-streaming across almost all the same specs except 5994p for the frame rate. You can control this camera with 100 via IP and Visca, and the movement speed can be as slow as 0.1 degrees per second to 100 degrees per second for the pan, and then 0.21 to 100 degrees per second for the tilt. The movement range for the pan is 340 degrees, or negative 170 to positive 170 degrees, and the tilt range is 130 degrees, or negative 30 to 90 degrees. There is a tally light, a part of the camera, and the supported protocol is Canon XC, IR, RS22, and Visca. So the interfaces or the ports on the back are a BNC 3G SDI female, a single HDMI type A female, an RJ45 HX slash NDI female, two three pin XLRs at mic level input, one quarter inch or 3.5 millimeter stereo mic level input, a single RJ45 RRS22 Visca input, a single USB type A input, and a single BNC for gin lock in or out. This camera can be powered over ethernet plus and the protocol for that 802.3 AT. So make sure that your network switch can support that much power. And it also has an AC power connection that is a barrel or coaxial at 24 volts. The power over ethernet consumes 19.6 watts and the power supply at 24 volts is 18.6 watts. This camera has the same operating and storage temperatures of 32 degrees to 104 degrees Fahrenheit or the equivalent of zero to 40 degrees Celsius. The operating and storage humidity are between 10 and 90%. The dimensions of the camera are 10.59 by 8.19 by 7.8 87 inches or 26.9 by 20.8 by 19.99 centimeters, excluding protrusions. And finally, this camera weighs nine pounds or 4.1 kilograms. So that's a quick rundown of the specs and what this device can do. I will note there is a micro SD card on the back of this device and you can record directly to it as well. And that is not mentioned in the notes that I just laid out. And our next one, we're gonna be talking about if PTZ cameras should be used in a professional workflow. So if you wanna see that, check that out here. And thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next one.